Okay, so uh, let's uh, move on here. This is kind of a newish topic. Maybe I should start a new recording, but I'll just leave it go for now. Uh, there's a thing called the rate, right? That thing that's called the rate is what we've been looking at, the change in concentration over the change in time. And then there's this thing called the reaction rate. And it is so easy to mix those up. Okay, so you got to be really, really good with your definitions and thinking like, oh, I need to do rate, that means slope, right? Rise over run, uh, delta A over delta T or delta Y over delta T, that kind of thing. Reaction rate actually takes into account stoichiometry. So let's see if I can do this the right way. Okay, and I will point out that reaction rate, I use the letters RR so people don't get it confused, but I'll say reaction rate. But when I write it, I always write RR. And that's a habit I started getting into in the last, I don't know, half dozen years or so, just to keep it straight for students. Okay, um, most, I don't actually know of any book that uses RR for reaction rate, but it, if you can use that term RR, um, uh, You'll help, it'll help you keep things straight, okay? So reaction rate incorporates stoichiometry. So let me give you sort of a sample reaction. Let's say A plus 2B, let's do 2A plus B um, makes uh, 3C like that, right? And let's say I measure the concentration change of B, right? Well, B will be going down at a rate of delta B over delta T like that. That'll be its rate. Now, A will be going delta, oh gosh, A is a horrible letter for this because it looks like a delta. Delta A over delta T like this. And you know because there's a 2 here, right, it's going to be going twice as fast because 2 A's get used for every B and 3 C's will be going, the C's will be going even faster but in the upward direction. Here's the thing. When we're talking about reaction rate, we're talking about this arrow. How fast is the arrow going? Well, B pretty closely reflects how fast the re reaction arrow is going. That is, how fast are two A's and a B getting together, right? And the way you, you do that is this. You incorporate the stoichiometry by normalizing to the coefficient, okay? So normalizing in math just means, really, dividing. So I have B, right? Change in B, oh sorry, reaction rate is going to be the change, uh, right, oh sorry, and I'll call that RR, is equal to 1 over 1, and then I'm going to use a negative sign, and then it's going to be delta B over delta T, like that. So what is this 1 over 1? The, this is the coefficient for B. Okay. The other one is just a 1 from being the reciprocal of B. So you're taking the reciprocal of the coefficient and multiplying it. Another way to look at this is RR is equal to minus 1 over 1 times the rate. And that's how reaction rate and rate are different. Okay, so you're thinking to yourself, well, you didn't do anything, right? In this case, I didn't. What I did, though, is I made it a positive number. Okay, because we want reaction rates always to be reflecting a positive number because when you're measuring these reactions, they're never going backwards. They're always going forwards. And so it's positive. The direction of the reaction is positive. So we take into account that the reactants are always going down in the reaction rate by introducing that negative sign. So having said that, if I wanted to calculate, oh, well, let me write this, the rate of B like this. If I wanted to do the same calculation from A, then I could say reaction rate right, is equal to negative, because that's to make it positive, right? 1 over A, or 2, sorry. And this is delta A over delta T. In other words, it's equal to 1 half, change the sign, rate of A, like that, okay? Now, um, we have some data that we can actually look at, it turns out. So we're going to go back. 
and it's this data here and right this is the rate of H2 and this is the rate of HI so if I want to calculate the reaction rate and this is over and they're both at the same point in time if I want to calculate the reaction rate right that for from HI for example that'd be minus and you'll notice it has a 2 here well sorry and it's a plus so it's 2 1 over 2 times and then it's uh, 1 Point four times 10 to the minus 2. And that becomes uh, 7.0 times 10 to the minus 3. Like that. I just divided that number by 2. Now, if I'm going to do the same thing with this data, right? then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the reaction rate is equal to right um, minus... 1 over 1 times, should have made the slide bigger, sorry, didn't realize it was going to get so crowded, uh, times negative, right, 7.0 times 10 to the minus third. And that's going to be 7.0 times 10 to the minus third. And what you should notice, right, is that these numbers are the same. Because the reaction rate is referring to how fast the reaction is going. So they should all be the same at the same time, right? Because we're all measuring it for one reaction. They're all being used or being produced in the same reaction. And, and that's the reason why we do the negative sign for the reactants and we divide by the stoichiometric coefficients. In essence, you're just trying to see how fast the reaction arrow is moving. All right, so this is your chance to try this out on your own. Um, so this is how I usually do this. I will show you the problem. We'll, I'll pause on my end and fill it all out. And you should pause it on your end and try to figure out how you're going to do that, Okay, how you can do the calculation. Um, and then when you start it again, I'll have the answer for one problem, and then we'll pause and do the same thing for the next problem. Okay, so... This is where I pause it, this is where you pause it, and then when you start it up again, uh, you should see the answers. All right, there it is. Um, so it's asking for the reaction rate, and so I took the three, all right, that's the coefficient for A, and I divided by three, took the negative sign, multiplied by the rate for A, that's what this number is here, all right? So that's what gives me this part that's right here. Now, do the math, get this, do the math, get that. So this is the reaction rate. Now, this is, um, this doesn't have the time specified, right? So these don't have to match. So don't worry, like if you try to do the second one and you don't get the same answer. I didn't say when these were measured. Uh, and so you don't have to get the same answer for them. So this is, again, hopefully that's what you got. Um, let's again, I'll pause it and let's see what you get for the next question. Okay, that's what you should have gotten for the second one. Um, I uh, let me make sure I'm recording the right screen. <laughs> that's what I got for the second one. <laughs> and uh, basically, because uh, it's a product, it's a positive, so I don't need to change the sign, right? Uh, and I'm only dividing by two because that's its coefficient, so that gives you the answer. So hopefully, you got those. So let's bend your brain a little bit. How do you do this one? I'm going to actually pause it and let you think about this for a little bit. And then we'll talk it through. I'll have some notes written up, right, uh, about how you would solve this problem. It says the rate for A, right, not reaction rate, the rate for A is this. What's the rate for C at that time? Okay, so I'll pause it and then I'll have some relationships drawn out. And then uh, we can talk about how you do these problems. All right, so uh, these are the little notes I meant to put up there. I also noticed that when I was typing this out, the negative sign got left out, uh, so I put that in there. Uh, so this is how I do it. The reaction rate is equal to one-third times the rate for A, and it's equal to one-half times the rate of C. So now what you have is you can solve these two. Okay. So when you do that, what you're going to have is the rate for C. So that's delta C over delta T. That's what we're looking for. That's going to be negative... 2 over 3 times the rate 
for A, like that. Now, some of you may pick up on this and may have already seen it. All I'm really doing here is stoichiometry. All right? So let's say it had one mole of A, and I wanted to convert it over to moles of C, right? Well, in order to get it over to moles of C, what I'm going to do is say, well, I need three moles of A for every two moles of C, like that. And that's where that two-thirds comes from. It's actually, a, when you do this kind of particular problem, it's a mole conversion between one reactant and one product or two reactants. And so when all else fails, right, you can just sort of rely on the stoichiometry. The only thing you can't pick up on this is that negative sign. The negative sign is part of this equation. But if you can remember that reaction rates are always positive, you can make that go away. Just saying. Okay. I just want you to be confident in yourself that way. So anyways, uh, I'll go ahead and do this calculation. So it's negative 2 over 3 times uh, negative 0 0.0150 molarity units per second like this. And that ends up being uh, 0 0.0100 um, molarity units per second like that. I picked numbers that I could do the math in my head, so hopefully I did it right. Okay, there you go. So this last segment of rates and reaction rates, I just wanted to give this sort of general uh, formula. Um, you'll see this in your book or something similar to this in your book. I always thought this was sort of the sort of non-intuitive here. Here's an equation and beat yourself up with it approach. Uh, but anyways, here's an equation, so beat yourself up with it. Um, the reaction rate for the reactants can be written like this. So what does this mean? If I have a reaction whose coefficient is W, right, and then the reactant is A, to write the reaction rate from that, I would say minus, because it's a reactant, 1 over W, that's the coefficient, times the change for A, or I could do it for B. Now, it's true for the products, right, that I could write 1 over Y for C, because that's its coefficient, and I don't leave, I don't put the negative sign in there, because C, delta C is already positive. And then I could do the same thing for D, and if I need to solve for, let's say, A, from D, all I have to do is set these two equal to each other because these are the same. Okay, so anyways, uh, yeah, I hope that you enjoyed that. So, <laughs> so that's it for this segment. Uh, next we'll go and we're going to be talking about um, rate laws, okay?